All right, so we've got, um, if you watch the first part of this, I replaced one of the coils. I've still got a miss on that cylinder. Probably should have done some more investigating before I just replaced the coil, but the coil was like $21. Went in and just replaced it because it was the easy thing to do. Um, but it didn't fix it, so it looks like we're going to... Um, Go ahead and replace the injector. I did listen to them with the little mechanic stethoscope. Listen to them on the injectors, and um, I finally got it to miss um, again, where I could troubleshoot it. When I replaced the coil, it had been missing, and then it stopped. And I couldn't get it to miss again, and so I replaced the coil. And then after driving again, it started missing again, and I was able to troubleshoot it then. And um, the um, Number three injector, I don't hear it clicking near as loud as the other two on this side. I can't really get to the the other side to hear those, but um, one and five seem to be clicking a lot louder than number three. I do hear some noise on number three, but it definitely doesn't have as much of a click to it. Um, so, I have a feeling that's probably what the problem is. Um, and it's too much trouble to tear all this down and swap injectors around. I'm not going to go through that much trouble to troubleshoot it. Um, you could, if you were trying to save money, uh, start swapping injectors around and see if it moved around. But um, this thing's got over 300,000 miles on it. Nothing has ever been done to the injectors. And so I just bought a rebuilt set of injectors for it. So I'm just going to swap all six of them out while I'm at it. And... Um, uh, I, I just, going through all this trouble, I didn't want to swap one of them out. And then, you know, 5,000 miles later, I got another one going out and swap it out. And, you know, it's just a lot of trouble to um, keep having to swap injectors around. If um, Anyway, yeah, anyway. So, that's what we're doing. We're going to tear this down. First, we'll take this intake hose off. Um, as you can see, I've had to glue this thing quite a bit. It's um, starting to crack and stuff, so I went ahead and bought an air raid uh, air tube. It replaces. It's ma meant to replace the cold air box, which I've already done, or the silencer box, which I've already replaced this piece of pipe. Um, so instead of just buying this piece, which was like forty-three dollars, I think I paid a hundred and thirty or something for the air raid setup, and that gets rid of this metal piece of pipe, which is probably conducting heat into the passage the air raid air raid is um, plastic so and it comes with the boot for each end and uh, this boot since this one's cracking this one's probably not far from cracking too so we'll swap that out while we're at it um, I've already started undoing this I've undone that hose we just need to slip the hose off and then we're gonna pull the throttle body off then we'll have to take these hoses off I think I can just lay the throttle body over or I may even be able to lay this top um, top manifold section over um, I've done this before I think I was able to do this and lay this over without undoing some of the stuff on here I can't I can't remember I may have undone the throttle body and left the throttle body kind of sitting on the intake um, so you don't have to undo the coolant lines from the throttle body Think that's what I did before um, so we'll see um, I'll show you as I go along but we do need to undo the uh, throttle cables from here uh, like I said this air intake tube and then we'll have to start getting there's these bolts here and then this brace right here once we get that off then you can undo the um, the bolts to the lower part of the intake but this top part of the intake comes off from the bottom part so Let's get started. Right, I've got the upper and lower intake off. Um, as you can see, um, there's quite a lot of hoses, especially that go into the lower intake. And you've got this fuel line here, it's return fuel line. What I did is I undid it where it attaches down here. And then that allowed me to um, lift the intake up enough to where I could get to these two bolts to get them out and just left it attached back there because that's real hard to get to. Um, 
you got some ground straps, you got this uh, diagnostics terminal, this uh, vacuum line to the uh, brake booster, um, got one here, I mean, there, fuel pressure regulator, there's just a lot of vacuum lines that attach. So make sure you get them all off, make sure you remember where they all are, um, and just make sure you get all the bolts out. Um, other than that, it's pretty simple. Like I said, I left the uh, throttle body on. I may just get a bungee and kind of tie it up out of the way. Uh, that allows me to, uh, these are coolant lines right here. So I can leave the coolant system intact without losing any coolant or anything by leaving the throttle body where it is. And um, now I can get to the fuel rail. Michael. All right, out with the old and with the new. These green ones I got on eBay. They're uh, Denso's. These are the old ones. I uh, can't even read what they are. They're not Denso. So you can see they showing their age. What I did, I just undid the four bolts off the rail and pulled the rail up both sides up together. Uh, left them connected. These have metal washer gaskets, but I think I can, without undoing those, I can pull them up and get them back on without um, having to undo all that and undoing the fuel lines and all that. We'll see. Um, I got them off. We'll see if we can get them back on. So let me get the rest of them in. All right. So that worked. I was able to um, do like I said. I didn't have to undo the and break the those metal gaskets. Um, left the four end bolts or whatever connected, lifted both rails up at the same time, and um, you know after taking those four Wait. bolts out, off the injectors, no, put the new injector, pulled the old injectors out, put the new injectors in, and then stuck the rail back on, all without undoing these in the fuel line and the line that connects. Um, so, all that's in, tightened up, the, uh, connectors are on for the uh, injectors we just got to put the intake manifold back on and I bungeed up that like I said I would it got it out of the way and I didn't have to undo the um, coolant lines so um, but it's getting late so I'm gonna quit for today I'm gonna go ahead and put my old coil back on too um, and I'll save that new one as a spare but anyway um, well Y'all will, uh, for me it'll be tomorrow, for y'all it'll be like two seconds. I've got the upper and lower intake back on, um, and throttle body back on, and now we're ready to put the uh, air raid intake on. Like I had said, this boot was pretty well split out. So, I'm going to take that off and put the air raid kit in and this will connect to the air raid but other than that all my vacuum lines are hooked up um, and the throttle cables and all that are hooked up vacuum lines back here don't forget there's one right back here it goes in the bottom uh, and there it is right there don't forget this one back here don't forget your fuel line over here ground strap all that kind of stuff that goes along over here and oh and I've got to tighten this right here forgot to tighten one bolt so I'll have to get the wrench on that one other than that we're done all right I've got the air raid in I've got this uh, flexible boot that goes down here on the air box the two clamps and the solid one that goes up here on the throttle body, two clamps. Then this hose here is too short so they include this uh, little splice which I don't really like so I'll probably replace it with a uh, long piece of hose just to go along there but I'll use it for now. And I had originally done away with the air box so I didn't have a spot for this hose and I had teed it into this line here that goes back to the air box and um, 
So what I did temporarily, I put their piece of hose back here, ran it along into here, and then I put a cap on my T that I had done previously, and then I'll replace this line with a solid piece later. I just don't have a piece. So when I get this piece here, I'll go ahead and get a piece to replace this right here so I don't have this T with the cap in it anymore. So I think that's it. We'll start it up and see if it fixes it. It's running smooth. So far so good. So I'm going to call that a fix. And like I said, I just need to replace this hose here because I had spliced it previously. And I'm going to replace this hose here so it's not spliced like that. But. Running good. So, and it is. I've, I haven't driven it, but I've let it sit here and warm up to operating temperature, just idling, and it's so far no miss. And uh, I went ahead and left that new coil in there, at least until I know for sure the miss is gone. Then I might just go ahead and swap it back for the original one. We'll see. So, anyway, thanks for watching.